The patient is positioned on the operating table in the lateral position. One member of the team secures the patient onto the table, one holds the leg, two apply the lateral table attachment and secure it with its special clamps. The table attachment is covered with a pad, taking care to avoid wrinkles which could be the cause of skin blisters. The hip distractor is assembled with the lateral table attachment and secured. Then it is aligned at about 20 degrees to the horizontal plane. The well padded foot is secured in the boot while one assistant secures the body and one applies pressure on the knee so that the foot lies firmly against the foot plate. The traction handle is unwound completely. Loose tension is applied and the distractor is secured while an assistant confirms safety to the genitalia. The radiographer makes sure that A. The C arm is facing the floor so that the X ray beam is horizontal. B. The X-ray tube is on the surgeon's side, behind the patient. C. It is possible to tilt the plane of the C-arm towards the leg. And D. That the portable image intensifier is advanced in a toe-to-head direction. The X-ray beam is angled by 30 degrees to the patient's transverse plane in order to obtain an AP X-ray of the hip. The C-arm is tilted as close to the leg as possible. With the X-ray tube, far from the buttock. The foot is secured further with adhesive tape. Minimal traction is applied and an assistant locks the distractor position. The trial of traction is performed under image while the surgeon adjusts the traction simultaneously confirming secure position of the foot in the boat. The traction handle is unwound and the number of turns defined. The surgeon can scrub while the scrub nurse preps and drapes. Pedals are positioned at the foot end of the table base, including those controlling A, the radio frequency probe, B, the burr and shaver, and, if available, C, a pedal controlling the image intensifier. It is important that all instruments and all team members are in order according to a standard theatre floor plan. The floor plan includes the anaesthetist and anaesthetic tower, the radio frequency and power tool equipment trolley, the monitor tower, the mobile X-ray image intensifier, a fluid management system with a team member on standby, the image intensifier monitors, the surgeon and assistant, the scrub nurse and surgical instrument trolley, i.e. the back table, and a mayor table to receive radio frequency and power tools. Prepping and draping can be performed by the scrub nurse while the surgeon is scrubbing. Attention needs to be paid to the sequence of events so as to avoid the risks posed by the proximity to the image intensifier. First, a proximal sterile drape is applied. Second, the x-ray tube is covered before the skin is prepped. Caution, not after the skin is prepped. It is important to allow the skin to dry completely before the transparent sterile drape is applied. At this stage, a number of people assist in order to apply this final drape appropriately. Important points include A. A posterior pouch to collect overflow of fluid. B. Even application of the adhesive end across the CM arch and on the image intensifier, in other words, the X-ray receiver side. C. Minimal tension allowed by pleating the self-adhesive side every few inches of the drape edge rather than sticking the whole edge tight and D allowing the formation of an anterior pouch for overflow of fluid where the surgeon presses the drape down onto the table in front of the patient and members of the team stick the free edge accordingly onto the monitor tower then the mayor table is positioned over the covered patient's head and all the tubes are positioned so that they reach the operating field from the side of the mayor table only. And the anterior overflow pouch is secured into the monitor tower which is moved closer to the patient while tubes and cables are connected and the camera is white balanced. With the aid of the mayor table, the back table need contain only a modest number of instruments. Traction commences by winding the traction handle by a number of full turns as defined previously during the trial of traction. Needle position is confirmed under image and the radiographic vacuum sign is abolished with the help of up to 40 milliliters of fluid which is injected.
radiographic images are saved and order in the operating theater is restored. The first stage of a hip arthroscopy is usually spent under traction. Examination of the hip requires maximum internal and external rotation of the foot performed by a member of the team who is not scrubbed. Take care to avoid injuries to the patient's leg or foot by the heavy C-arm and ensure adequate space is available to allow for foot rotation. Release the foot plate securing knob and rotate the foot externally and internally and finally secure the foot in neutral position. In the second stage of hip arthroscopy, traction is released and traction time is documented. The hip must be flexed by 30 to 40 degrees to allow access to the peripheral compartment. Again, attention needs to be paid to allow adequate clearance of the C-arm. Also, cycles of full flexion and extension are necessary to assess for femoral acetabular impingement. And back to neutral flexion. Success lies a. In ensuring that an adequate number of team members are present during positioning who pay attention to the sequence of events and of instruments. B. In occupying a small number of team members during prepping and draping who have to be experienced in arthroscopy. And C. In spending a few minutes to allow for timely commencement of traction once the patient is prepped and draped, foot rotation in the first stage, and release of traction and hip flexion extension in the second stage.